Hello Matrix and friends, welcome to this video. It's time now to put a seal on this paper too by doing my favorite section which is the Euclidean section. Euclidean geometry is like the king of mathematics for me. Doesn't mean other sections are not equally strong but this one is more integrative than any other and it seems to have wide applications throughout mathematics so I feel like if anybody is excelling in this section they should automatically <laughs> excel in other sections as well of course here it's a matter of knowing the rules and the regulations so it's like you know being in a court or parliament or something where you have to always refer to the rules for whatever statements or postulations you have to make to support them, of course, and to essentially function around this parliament, which is Euclidean geometry, okay? So, for every statement you make here, it is prudent to provide a reason, even if it's not necessary, but it's much more important to do so, so that you can show the connectedness of your statements and the correctness of your postulations, all right? Um, I know uh, I may have delayed this a little bit, but yeah, it should be okay. So I'll try to find that physical science paper for those of you still doing physics and see what was in there. Because I strongly believe the exam you're about to write, those who are still to write their media exams, will have a, a little bit of more lean angle towards this part of an exam. So. I think the style will pretty much be the same and maybe some questions may really have some striking similarities. So you want to be on the lookout for that. All right, um, like I said, this is my favorite. So I felt like a king <laughs> for knowing Euclidean geometry, especially the type of questions that were much more advanced than just a pretty standard. So let's have a look and see what these guys were having. Um, we've already worked out analytical and um, trigonometry uh, now we are left with uh, this part so there are not so many questions here they just made it into two questions which is much nicer sometimes this 11 question situation eh, it causes a few palpitations you know but we can take any palpitase, you know, bring it on. All right, guys, uh, let's just go for it. Question 9 reads, 9.1 in the diagram, D, E, F, G. Where is this? Where is that? D, E, F, G. Is a cyclic quadrilateral. So I feel like when they do this, they make it too easy, you know. But it's all right, sometimes you need a bit of ease, right? Because they have to make some declarations as well to convince you. Because you may see it, but doubt yourself. So rather than to doubt yourself, when they're giving it away, make sure it's done. So there's our cyclic quad. This is it. And we can see that the vertices are at circumference. Okay, all the vertices are at circumference. So that's fine. And then we are told also that DE is parallel to GF. And we can see that DE is drawn parallel to GF. And it's indicated so we don't have to worry about it. And then um, let's just hold on for a second here. So if this is a cyclic quad, what do we know? We know that this angle plus that angle is 180 degrees. Why? These are the opposite angles of a cyclic quad, right? And then it also tells us that G1 plus 2 will also be equal to E1 plus 2 plus 3. These are also opposite angles of a cyclic quad. So you can already tell there's a unit here that is given, so it may be useful in calculating others. Okay, not a problem. So we're told DE is produced to R. So whenever something is produced, it tells you that it is a straight line at this point. So there's no angulation that may 
take away the effect of this being a straight line and once you have a straight line you know that angles that lie on the same straight line are supplementary so that means e1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 are supplementary because they are on the same straight line because this statement that says de is produced once you hear this word produced just know it's trying to tell you that you have a straight line there okay now if this is a straight line now we know that okay this angle here e4 because it's outside our cyclic quad but on this straight line that is extending one side of the cyclic quad so what can we tell about that we know that oh my lord that one should be equal to that one isn't it so d i mean sorry angle g1 plus 2 is equal to angle e4 why because this is an exterior angle of a cyclic quad it is defined as exterior angle of a cyclic quad equals the opposite interior angle of that cyclic quad so we are sorted here we have a bit of an interpretation for ourselves and what does this tell us if we know this whole angle is 72 and this one is 16 that means we can calculate that angle right because from 72 we take 16 it gives us e2 so we already have a value for e2 okay not a big deal so what else can we say we know that okay this angle here though I don't know if it's going to make uh, any difference to do okay maybe let's just use a colored pen but I don't like colored pens because they can cause a bit of a situation so let's do it broadly but we know that this angle um, if these two lines are parallel this being a straight line which is what would function as a transversal line it would tell us that greatly it should be equal to that angle over there right why because these are alternate angles so they're forming this n type of uh, figure here or you can say a z okay my name starts with a z so <laughs> i would say a z <laughs> all right not a problem uh we can say that about that situation and then what else can we say fine um, if ever it was ever necessary we can say that this angle here i will shade it green so that e1 plus 2 right is going to be equal to this angle here whatever its name sometimes you don't need to worry about whether there was anything said about the intersection here you can name it if you need it okay so we know that this angle equals that what is that is corresponding angles with this set of lines being parallel okay so we're good what else do we know of course this line is a continuation of this side and that side so we also know that hold on there's more here all right, where is this pencil now? How can my pencil go missing? Okay, here it is. Now, we also know for a fact that, well, if these lines are parallel, and also this being the transversal line, this F1 should also be equal to E4. Why? It's forming a letter Z, but this one is almost like put the other way around or you can say letter N these are alternate angles okay great holy cross okay what is the other thing that we also know we also know that fine we know for a fact that if this angle is known it is also equal to that angle the angle T why these are angles in the same segment subtended by chord EF or arc 
EF whatever you want when you have both you can choose what you want to use all right so not a big deal but what else do we know also I mean we just want to exhaust some of the things that we know because it makes life easy when we do that so we also know that find this angle here that particular one would be equal to that particular one if we can know e2 for some reason we will then know f2 right because these are also angles on the same segment subtended by this time arc gt or tg there's no chord okay but it still has the same effect okay maybe we are overly interpreting our diagram at this point um, but if it doesn't hurt we just stick with it for now but don't overly interpret so when you feel like you're going too far then stop because at some point it will make the diagram a little bit cumbersome to work with so you want to keep it simple so of course this angle here is also equal to that these are vertically opposite angles and the same applies for these ones so uh, that is just the story over there okay so I think this is enough for now sometimes don't overly do it so that your diagram doesn't become a bit ugly and a bit botched so you just want to work with it in a nice and clean manner so they're telling us now that fine T is another point in the circle okay there it is EG uh, there is EG FT and ET are drawn okay we already worked with them without reading any statement about them so E4 is 72 degrees we've seen that G1 is 16 okay so that's essentially what we have so let's see what are the questions here determine with reasons so you always have to provide some reasons of course not every statement you make should have a reason but the most important ones should have a reason okay especially key statements maybe let's just say your key statements need to have a reason because they allow you to do the rest of the work is it not so it is so okay the sizes of i mean the size of the following angles so d g f what is that d g f so that is g1 plus 2 and we know that oh god g1 plus 2 equals e4 that means it is 72 degrees reason is exterior angle of a cyclic quad great so that one is sorted t well once we have d sorry d g f we know that fine g2 is going to be d g f minus g1 and let's see what is the size of that one so we're just working it out in the mind at this point so we don't need to be writing anything so this is going to be 72 minus 16 that gives us 56 degrees over here okay although they look almost equal if you think about it but they are not equal theoretically hey, hey these things they will work on you if you try to think this is on scale so don't assume this diagram is drawn to scale so this is 56 degrees then that means we already have t there which is 56 degrees that also tells us that we have e1 that would be 56 degrees okay great is there anything else we can do uh, at this point in time the answer is no oh we also know that fine that one would be 72 so if we have 72 we have 56 we can work out e3 plus 2 right and then e3 plus 2 this is going to be from three angles of that triangle so we can do some calculations but I don't know if we can be able to single out E2. It doesn't look like we can at this point. We can't single out E2. And that means we are a little bit unable. We're falling short in trying to get that angle uh, F2. So don't always try to get them right. Maybe since we think we can calculate this whole angle here. Uh, which I don't think also is possible. Is it possible? I don't think so. Yeah, we can't calculate this whole angle either, that E1 plus E2, because it's a bit of a situation. If we can't find this, then we are in a bit of a situation. So that 2 and 3, we are falling short for now. So 
we can't calculate everything but we are ready to to move on so it's fine what else do they want angle t great we already established that is going to be equal to g2 gef what is gef gef so it is that big angle so that means it will take us to our yellow triangle i like to to indicate where I'm going because I don't want to find myself struggling when I have to figure out where to go. Sometimes working diagrams like this, it solves a bit of the problem for you because some of the things are a little bit less obvious. But by mapping out where you must go, you find that, ah, my goodness. Now I find it much easier to approach the question and then you can even tell what are the limitations for cracking that question easily. But once you have a direction, you will know whether the technique will work or not. Okay. Of course, I'm not trying to make this look nice, but as long as it is nicely shaded. So for the last question, I have to focus on this. I will have this. I have that as as an alternate angle to that and therefore I can work this out from three angles of a triangle and in essence I have a way of answering all those three questions so I don't need all these ones that I didn't know but always think about them so that if a question comes you already have had a thought and you know exactly what are your limitations in there okay don't know why this camera is trying to move um, Okay, so let's do this thing. So Euclidean geometry is like the nicest. I don't know. Something happened here. My stuff moved and I don't like it. But we can work with any trouble that tries to find us. So this is again D, V, E, May, June 2022, paper 2. Of course, this is maths. Or mathematics in short so we're doing question 9 which is the Euclidean section so 9.1 we have what we were given so 9.1.1 they want DEF so we said here fine what is DGF DGF is this angle so we said it's gonna be equal to E4 so we'll just go ahead and say D G F equals uh, angle E4, right? E4. The reason for this statement, remember this is a key statement, so it must carry some reason. The reason is it is an exterior angle of, this angle must be sharper, not like an L. Exterior angle of, cyclic quad D E F G I mean you don't really have to specify the cyclic quad at times you just say exterior angle of a cyclic quad I'm being comprehensive in case you are wondering what cyclic quad they're talking about is the one they gave us already if they didn't say it it would even be nicer to state this is a cyclic quad okay so what do we know therefore angle d g f is going to be equal to 72 degrees you don't have to provide a reason for that last one that's the answer so essentially you get a mark for that statement and it's a reason and then for the answer so we are happy first two marks nice and easy 1.9.1.2 so we have to find angle T. So angle T is going to involve a bit more work because there's no direct way to just jump into it. We first have to find G2. I don't know why they made it two marks. Should have been three marks given the fact that we have to link this into some intermediate step. Anyway, I don't know why these days I like Sutra so much, eh? speak it more than I am speaking my language <laughs> anyway uh, so we're going to say what G what plus 2 right or maybe let's just start here and say G1 
angle G1 plus angle G2 are equal to 72 degrees okay of course here you don't really have to say many things of course they add up to angle D G F if anyone is wondering but sometimes it's too obvious um, what is G1 so this implies that 16 degrees plus G2 angle G2 equals 72 degrees therefore angle G2 equals uh, this is 72 minus 16 we got 56 not 56 man shouldn't be 54 let's have a look see um, 72 right should be 56 years I mean. yeah 56 degrees that's fine we can say here but but what we know that angle T which is our interest equals angle G2 all oh, right what is the story there now this is the key statement these are angles in the same segment subtended by chord EF of course I'm just trying to be as comprehensive as I can so if you just said if you just said um, angles in the same segment I mean it's all right but I always like to prove it beyond reasonable doubt that this is so therefore we know that angle T is G2 which is 56 degrees so do you see there was a bit of work here so but I guess they feel like these guys this is all you needed to say uh, two marks here yeah. but you needed to show of course where all of this came from so it's all right easy two marks anyway not a big deal last question so 9.1.3 what do they want us to find GEF GEF that is E2 and 3 so we can say now in uh, okay let's start again there were more marks for this one I don't know why they decided to give us less we need to make some declarations we can say here in triangle GEF because this is where we're zooming into what do we know we know that angle F1 is equal to angle E1 of the diagram I mean E4 of the diagram right the reason for this these are alternate angles with what um, you always state the set of parallel lines so it's going to be ED is parallel to FG or whatever order you want to write them so that was given so what does this tell us it tells us that F1 equals 72 degrees because we needed it isn't it and we know that fine we found our G2 already there so we're not going to waste our time we can say also G2 equals what 56 degrees here you can just say calculated above okay write the calculated above in full don't be like this we can say therefore um, D E sorry G E F oh yeah one again this is my card so G E F plus angle F1 plus angle G2 equals 180 degrees the reason it is the sum of three angles of a triangle which triangle is this we've already stated it in our opening statement okay this implies 
that G E F plus F1, we said F1 is 72 degrees, plus G2, which we found is 56 degrees, must be equal to 180 degrees. Of course, from here, you just take this from 180. Okay, maybe let's say, um, therefore, G E F equals 180 degrees minus the sum of these two, 72 degrees plus 56 degrees, okay, which is going to be equal to, so we just do the calculation, 180 minus the sum of 56 plus 72, um, it gives us 52 degrees, and that's the answer, okay, not a problem. Uh, this is also easy, but you can see here there's a bit of work, so maybe three marks would have been better. Because, I mean, think about it, to do this one is mark worthy for sure. I do definitely feel it is mark worthy. But maybe they are not rewarding you here for any of the gymnastics here, They're just the answer, which is here unfair. But we take it as unfair as it is. So the total here is not yet done because this question is not over. So, okay, that's fine. So that's how you would deal with that first part of this question paper on this diagram. All right, let's move on before we take forever. This one is pretty easy on us and we've got to keep it that way. We've got to keep it that way. So let's have a look here, see what are we dealing with. So 9.2, another diagram to interpret. So always try your best to, to work things out, okay? Always try your best. Believe me, it will be worth your while. So in the diagram, the diagonals of a parallelogram. See that story? Diagonals of a parallelogram. K-L-M-N. K-L-M-N. So this guy here is a palm, is a parallelogram. So we are dealing with this. So I'm, I'm just being silly, honestly, you can see it, but I just like to highlight it so that you can follow me. All right, so this one that I'm highlighting, but uh, this color is not the best. Ne? Yeah, it's not the best color. This green doesn't look like it's doing the job. Anyway, so that is the parallelogram we have, okay? Now, if we are talking about the diagonals of the parallelogram intersect at P, so we are being told P is the midpoint of this parallelogram. So, fine, we can find... Now, what do we know about diagonals of a parallelogram? They bisect each other at a common point. So this tells us it doesn't really do the job. Let's just stick with the colored pens. Uh, this, I don't know what is that pen called. It doesn't really do me so much justice. Okay. We want something that's visible. So we know that that KP will be equal to KM because of diagonals of a parallelogram. And this one will be equal to that one but as a whole remember k l i mean p l not just um, p t sometimes when there's too many lines crossing it makes life a little bit uncomfortable so you know what we are what we are saying is that this line what you are saying is that this line so we know that we are saying this line here is equal to that line over there. So I'm just going to show it green, but ideally they should be the same color so that you can understand what is going on. So basically it means NP equals PL. Okay, so that is fine. 
So we know that, okay, understanding the properties of that geometric figure gives us a bit of an understanding of what we are doing. So now let's continue. There's not much we can say at this point. It says, uh, what, wait, wait. It says now, um, NM, NM is produced to S. That means we have the same straight line here to S, okay? Not a problem. R is a point on KL, so we can see that. And RS cuts PL at T. So RS, it's a straight line, it cuts PL at T. We can see that, okay? Um, now we're given a ratio here that NM divided by MS is 4 is to 1. So this is the most important thing to consider. So we are told here NM over this part, okay? This is 4. Get a multiple there that keeps this in proportion. So it's going to be A. If you have 4A, it's going to be A here. Or you can't write 1A. Of course, you can use X, you can use Y, you can use any alphabet. I mean, alphabet. If you want, not a big deal. So, what else do we know? We know for a fact that, um, uh, okay, we've already stated what is going on in this. So, this is the only ratio they gave us, right? So, they're telling us that NL, the whole of that length, is 32 units, okay? If that is the case, if we have this situation here, this situation over here, sometimes working on this diagram can be annoying. If we know that this whole thing is 32 units, what does it tell us? It tells us that, look, we know diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So we know that this side is going to be half of 32, which is 16 units. And the same will apply for this one here. That should be 16 units, okay? And in essence, this gives us what? Yeah, we are working here. This gives us PT as well. So PT is going to be essentially equal to what? 16 minus 12, which is just 4 units. Okay, so that gave us PT, so that's fine. Um, sometimes you don't want to overly do things because you still want to maintain the shape so that you can use it if questions are popped that go further than just those dimensions. But that's all we know. We don't know the other dimensions in what proportion are they divided, but they're just equal. So if we can know one, we know the rest. All right, so that's it. That's it for now. So what do they want? It says determine with reasons the value of the ratio NP, NP over PT in simplest form. All right, so PT, so we know that, oh, we needed to work PT and we just did. We found out it's four units and we had to use some properties of a parallelogram. So that is easy, so we can do that. Then it says prove with reasons that KM is parallel to RS, okay. I think here we need to just use our proportionality theorem. So if we have this ratio, and now they asked us to find that ratio. So now if you're looking at this triangle, if you're looking at this triangle here, just going to outline it here. I'm not going to fill it in. Sometimes it's a bit silly to do that. So I'll just make it a nice yellow outline. So if you look at that yellow outlined triangle, what it means is, if we know the divisions of those sides that are opposite, then if that is the same proportion, 
then we know that this line should be parallel. So that is the converse of that proportionality theorem. So that is going to be a bit easier because once we have that, you can already tell that 16 by 4, this is going to be 4 is to 1. So it's the same proportion as this one. Of course, here we are using actual units. Here we're just using the ratio. We don't know the actual size. All right, not a problem. So that is also sorted in a way. Now they're telling us Nm is 21 units. Okay, so Nm is 21 units. So, yeah, Where's my pen? Okay, let's get another one here. So, what we are being told is that Nm is 21 units. So, this is the one. So, now we know the actual value of Nm. It is actually... 21 units okay now once we know this one obviously we know the ratio of these two so we can actually get any other one okay maybe we can get this one but maybe not yet maybe not yet but if we know this one what does that tell us it tells us that KL is going to be 21 units why because Another property of a parallelogram is that the opposite sides are pair, I mean the pair of the opposite sides is parallel to each other and they are also equal. Okay, so not a problem. So that means we can deal with the situation, calculate the length of RL with reasons. Of course, if we want RL, we also know the division of this side to this side. We'll have established this line is parallel to that. That means we have to focus on this uh, blue outlined triangle over here. Because we will have one side parallel to the other, it will cut. Therefore, the, the, the triangle will be divided. I mean, the other two sides are going to be divided in the same proportion. So that means we're going to focus on that. So this is easy. I mean, once you work your diagram, you know all is left is for you to align your statements with all that you have discovered. So it makes your life a bit easier. Because then you can now choose to be faster on your writing. But it's easier to write fast when you know what you are writing. But to write fast what is sometimes elusive or is still a mystery, it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. So we know we're walking away with these 16 marks. There's nothing here to leave behind. But remember, don't assume someone understands what you're doing. Even if you write in your diagram that is provided on your answer sheet, you still have to provide reasons on, on your actual answers why those values are the way they look, okay? So don't think that you worked it in your mind. The other person understands. They need to be proven. They need to be made to understand. Yes, they do understand, but they want to be made to understand, okay? So let's answer this one and put it to rest. So we are doing 9.2, 9.2.1. So 9.2.1 says we need NP over PT. So we need to work our magic here. First of all, we're going to say NL equals, okay? And this, this equals, so let's have a look here. How are we going to start working this out? I'm going to start by saying here. N L equals 32 units. Okay, that was given. Of course, I'm just building up momentum here. Nothing serious. I can also say uh, also what? I know that NP is equal to, now this is something that you will definitely have to provide the reason equals PL, okay? What is the reason? This is much stronger a statement here, is that diagonals 
oops, diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. When you say bisect, it means you're cutting into two equal parts, okay? Not a problem. So this is core. What do we know now? This tells us, therefore, NP is equal to a half of uh, NL. Because we know that NL is equal to NP plus PL. Okay? I mean, this is just a, a way of just showing these things. The, this is half of 32, which is 16 units. So you want to show that you know where this calculation came from and came about. Of course, always try to be comprehensive. I mean, it's not always going to be very smooth, of course, but there are some areas that can provide for that smoothness. And now we know. And if we know... NP, we automatically know PL, so we don't have to say therefore PL is as well. Because once we make a statement, you can just say calculated above or stated above or proved above, okay? Great. Now we're building momentum because we want to find PT so that we can just do this directly. There's no better way because we don't have enough information to do the proportionality theorem. So we want the direct values. We'll just do it as they gave it. We don't have to provide a reason for dividing it. They are asking it in that manner, so we're giving it as they want it. All right, so we can say but. Okay, but. But what? We know that PT, because we are interested in PT, that's why we're featuring it, plus TL equals PL okay uh, here you don't have to say much just say C diagram you don't even need a reason here because it's already evident someone will just look and be like okay it is true all right so what do we want here sometimes you don't want to state too much because I mean TL was provided so you're just substituting there so we can say this implies that PT plus TL, we know that it was 12 equals, we proved above this is 16, so we don't have to provide reasons. Therefore, PT equals 16 minus 12, which is 4 units. All right, so these are the ways in which we maneuver ourselves. Can you see it's almost like a whole page? I really don't know how you guys manage with those small spaces they provide you. But anyway, you guys are the best. So if you don't adapt, then this kills you. So now we have found what we need, right? We know our NP, right? Which is the guy that we're interested in. And we know our PT. So our ratio is sorted. So we can now say, therefore... NP over PT. I always like to write things the way they give them to me. So I know that NP 16 is 2, NP which is, I mean PT which is 4, which is going to be, now they said in its simplest form, so you don't leave it like that, so you always take the smaller one and divide throughout, but you don't divide on that side please. So 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And then 16 divided by 4 is 4 times. And that is the answer. So always try to answer in the manner that is provided. But again, you will not be punished if you use the division line, say NP over PT. Still okay. Because it becomes even much more obvious that this is what you are dealing with. So we are done. We are certainly done. But there was a bit of work. Like I said, this one is not a strong statement, but this one is. It provides for some work, okay? And once we know this is the story here, uh, I think the mark is important to give here. 
this is just a means to an end so I mean the mathematical gymnastics were not doing algebra at all and arithmetic so they will not really be impressed but they will be expecting you to showcase that again this one is not really a big deal honestly it's not a big deal but what is the big deal is finding this guy okay it's finding this guy what is the next big thing to do here the next big thing to do here is to now do the correct substitution here and the simplest answer that they wanted so there is our four marks but maybe I'm giving even more one two three four five okay maybe there's something that you won't get maybe this one they are not impressed by it because I've already shown how you calculated it so yeah easy 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 nine comma two comma two so it's easy but it don't be losing marks here it says now prove with reasons they like to make you scared because you'll be like reasons do i need many don't uh, that km is parallel to rs okay we can do that pretty easily but we're going to have to use which triangle now we're going to use triangle n s t or s t n i don't know yeah n s t is better okay um so we can say here in triangle n s t now once you direct someone like that you know for a fact that here's the thing we know that in this triangle we discovered that np over um, pt gave us uh, 4 over 1 although it's just 4 but we just want to show the proportion or ratio I mean you can take it the other way around take pt over np it's up to you in this case because you're doing it uh, that one we know that we proved it above proved above also what else do we know we know that nm over ms is equal to 4 over 1 that was given okay we know therefore np over pt equals nm over ms right of course the same ratio and proportion so what do we know therefore we can say pm is parallel to ts because we are talking about that triangle okay uh, here you can just say converse of prop theorem okay great and therefore because remember this line we know that TS continues to R we also know that this PM is just a portion of that whole diagonal of KM so these are the same lines we can now make the conclusion that is correct because you answer as they asked you therefore KM is parallel to RS you just stop there sometimes you don't want to provide too many reasons because you're going to fry yourself I think here this statement is important right and this statement is important of course this was kind of obvious but you needed to show that this is the case but again you cannot be awarded for what you've already worked but this link here maybe makes more sense maybe that's where the two marks come from okay so let's do the last one now it says if nm equals 21 units which we know now okay determine with reasons the length of rl so we're going to now move ourselves this thing maneuvers us into this triangle the blue one of course we're going to have to link this guy to that guy first then once we have that then we can use this proportion because we already know that this line is parallel to that. 
so we just simply take our proportionality theorem there uh, maybe let's do it on the next page I don't know it looks like I'm running out of pages to work on okay I still have a few more so let's do it let's do it let's do it this one was nice I mean it looked like a standard grade type question huh? there was no higher grade at all here so please don't say this one was, was difficult I think up to this level that was like maybe between standard and higher grade back in the days there was nothing really difficult 9.2.3 uh, okay so we want to do this RL okay now let's do this one we know that we want to focus in triangle KPL all right because we've identified we need to get there so what do we know about this triangle we know that KL equals NM of the diagram and what is the story here I think this is a strong statement we can say these are the opposite sides of a parallelogram don't overly explain certain things therefore KL equals 21 units because they gave you that this is 21 so I mean they will know that this is linked to that so sometimes don't to provide too many explanations we can say but but what what are these buts man you're like a crazy person here so here you're like in court you have to prove your innocence unfortunately you gotta be selfish and not take the fall this time you wanna remain standing we will know for a fact that well LD right because we want RL so we're going to use this so we can say LT um, okay maybe let's not start there let's start on the other side let's say RL L R over but now we don't want to be calculating this side because we don't know this one but we know the whole side so let's use the whole side so we have the leverage to do that we're just going to pretend we have similar triangles which is true anyway the smaller one over the bigger one so we're going to use their corresponding side so this is going to be LK equals great LD over the whole side which is LP the lumbar puncture <laughs> to those who work in the medical field they will know that you're doing an LP when someone has meningitis or you think they have it or a subarachnoid hemorrhage to prove that they actually are bleeding in there anyway so not a problem so what is the story here this is prop theorem right but state but state it in this context now we know that RT is parallel to KP we know this is part of what we already proved so do not try to explain that sometimes it doesn't fall nicely to really provide a proper explanation so what do we want we want RL so or LR if you want so what does this imply this implies what it implies that RL is going to be equal to all you do just cross multiply that alone because to do this and then divide is crazy man just do it it's going to be LT over LP multiplied by uh, LK that is as simple as that this is just algebraic manipulation so what is LT here or TL we were told it's 12 LP we know we proved above that LP or PL was equal to 16 multiplied by LK we know now we've stated it's 21 so we don't have to stress ourselves so just simple arithmetic over there so 12 times 21 
divide by 16 so this is 3 3 I uh, that can't be true man 12 times 21 yeah it's 252 man I was expecting something like this now I was wondering what is going on here so I'm getting 63 over 4 which to two decimal places is 15 comma 75 units because we didn't know what were these units anyway so we take our four marks with a big smile so here it is important this is a strong statement okay but you already know the units so you're not gonna be awarded for that but this is yet another strong statement all right all right and then we can say correct substitution here and the final answer gives you the nice four marks so this one is a bit easier to see the marks a eh? four marks and we end the 16 marks of this question like i said this one was pretty standard grade material not really higher grade stuff that you have to think a bit more of course um maybe you would say in between standard and higher grade okay pretty much for 9.2 maybe we can say between because everything was not stated you had to prove it so to link things maybe you would say between standard and higher grade but it was something that is easy to handle something easy to handle all right guys i don't have a lot of space here so my pages are like trying to mess with me i just hope we don't lose the power at 11. you know how this country of ours let me get my torch just in case this happens we can have some light because um, it's almost 11 p.m now so Look here guys, this is in your textbooks. Honestly, I'm not gonna do it. I'm sorry. I'm not doing this one. But I'll just state what you're going to do here. So once you have similar triangles, which is similar to just what we did, they want you to prove the proportionality theorem of their corresponding sides. But all you do, you're going to construct, say you're going to use S here. Just say, construct S on AB such that AS equals ED, okay, or DE. And then you're going to say you're going to construct as well T on AC such that AT equals DF, all right? Right. Then you can prove congruency. Then you can say join ST um, in fact, just say draw ST on triangle ABC with S on AS such that and AT on AC such that. Then you prove congruency here because it's going to be side angle because these ones are given that they are equal and side and that means your congruency is proven. Okay. Once you prove your congruency, then that means this one, you have to declare that this angle is equal to that angle, and then that this angle is equal to that angle, and what is the reason for that? These are the corresponding angles in congruent triangles, okay? Now you can make the conclusion that, oh, this one, by being equal to that, it was given that this is equal to that, that means this one is equal to that, and the same goes for that, so that means uh, if you have corresponding angles equal, it means this line is parallel to that. Now you know you have set up your uh, proportionality theorem and then you do it. I don't think it is going to be of use to try and do this one at this point. Let's just jump it. But if you want it, at a later stage I can do it. But it's in your textbooks and it's pretty easy to follow. So let's not waste time here. Let's just take a dig at some serious questions here. Now again, we're going to be given a nice diagram to work on. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. It looks like we're going to need a bit of a show here. So let's read. In the diagram, O is the center of the circle passing through A, B, C, and D. So A, B, C, and D. 
they don't make necessarily because it's not drawn they don't make a cyclic quad but these points are concyclic okay if we were to join here we have a cyclic quad and we are told this is the center of our circle okay not a problem now what is the story it says ec is a tangent to the circle at c so the eastern cape here is the tangent oh doch once you hear those words don't wait for too long before you make the links okay you know that fine i'm looking for a 10 chord theorem here this angle between the tangent and this chord, it doesn't matter that I have not really read statements stating that there is a chord in Don Don Nipaya. This is where I'm going. So this angle is going to be equal to that angle. So start. Once you find something easy and compelling to state, just do it. This is the 10 chord theorem because it says the angle between the tangent and the chord is the angle subtended by that chord at circumference. Or you can say this chord divides this circle into this minor segment and this larger bigger segment. So it says the angle between the tangent and the chord equals the angle in the alternate segment. That becomes the alternate segment to this one. All right, not a problem. Um, what else do we want? says diameter db so once we know this is a diameter what do we know about diameters our diameters subtend right angles at circumference right because twice angle at center i mean angle at center is twice the angle at circumference so that's how you prove that so we know that ah, as ugly as it looks this is 90 degrees man 90 degrees so that e uh, that C2 plus 3 is 90 degrees. Why? Because they are telling us that BD is a diameter. So angle subtended by a semicircle is 90 degrees at circumference. Great. And what else is being told here? Um, uh, there's something. What is this? Now they are telling us that diameter DB produced meets tangent EC at so this is a straight line all the way. It means this tangent there. Okay, but don't make the error of saying this EC is equal to EB. No, it's not because this is not a tangent. If it was a tangent, then you would say that. So F is a point on EC such that BF is perpendicular to EC. Okay, so there it is. It's already drawn in. And you know for a fact that if that is the case, also, this is a case Y angles on a straight line. So F2 is also 90 degrees. Then, what is the story here? Radius CO produced, where is that? Radius CO produced uh, bisects ED at G. Okay, so this is again a straight line. And a line through the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord, because this indicates that this is equal is also perpendicular to that chord that is theorem one grade 11. all right so once you identify a lot of these things your life becomes a bit easier so they're saying that things were drawn so we can already make some associations here okay so is there anything more uh, at this point i think it's okay to just leave it at that okay maybe let's not leave it at that let us work a little bit more what else do we know? If this is a center, and then this is the line from center to circumference, this is the radius. So we know that the radii or radii are equal. So PO equals and the same OC because these are all three radii already. And if these are radii, what does it tell me? If E2 is here, then it should be equal to this C3, right? Because this is now an isosceles triangle. So this one must actually be equal to that one. And it means this one is also equal to that one. Okay. What else? What else? What else, man? Yeah. Yeah, man. We're working now. This one, too. Because I have an isosceles triangle also here. It means this P3 
must also be equal to my C2 here. So there's a lot of equalities, but remember, don't overly interpret, but try your best to make the links, because once these are obvious, then you don't struggle to make connections with what you need to connect with. Is there anything more? Let us not complicate our lives here. We just leave it at this for now. Um, yeah, let's just leave it at this for now. We... I think we've got everything under control at this point, so that's not overly complicated. Let's just see how we can dig. Let's dig at it. Let's dig at it. We have to now find some answers. All right. Um, now that we have done that, so it says prove with reasons that FB is parallel to CG. FB is parallel to CG. Okay, how do we do that? Hmm. Oh, there's something I forgot to state here. <coughs> Sorry. This one, if this is a tangent, and sorry and that <coughs> sorry is a red yes I also know that the tangent so there's gonna be a bit of a mess here a tangent is always perpendicular to radius okay so there's a bit of a crisscross here this one over that one so I know okay for me to prove this story Maybe we left out some very important stuff here. We started focusing on the 10 chord, but sometimes it can capture both. The 10 chord plus 10 perpendicular to radius. So we know that if I have this angle as 90 degrees, that means C1 plus 2. And that F1 is also 90 degrees. You don't really have to consider this one at this point. You use what is given. If I prove corresponding angles to be equal, therefore these two lines are parallel, okay? And if these two lines are parallel, I already know that C2 is equal to Yo, I can revelations can go. I also know that this one is gonna be equal to that. These are what we call alternate angles. Look at my name, the the letter Z or N is proven. So that means this line bisects this angle into two equal angles. Okay, not a problem. So maybe a question like that could be popped that prove that BC bisects FBD, you know, stuff like that. But don't overly interpret things, of course. So here we have an answer for the story. Okay, so that one is easy. Now it says prove that FCB, triangle FCB, FCB is similar to triangle CDB. C, D, B, not a problem. Of course, I don't, I don't really care how they put it, but you guys are told that if this is the way it means F equals angle C. Okay, uh, in those two triangles, and it is true because we know that angle C in this triangle is 90 degrees, angle in the semicircle, and then that one is 90, but I really don't care. If I can link the angles, I know the opposite sides will link pretty much the same, so, but yeah, you can think of that as well. And then it means angle C in this triangle uh, equals angle D onto the other one. So angle C on that small one, which is C1, equals angle D. Again, that was the 10 chord theorem. And then B, we proved now that B actually, <laughs> uh, B equals B for both, right? So this angle is equal to that angle. Again, the link has been the fact that this angle equals that angle, but this one is equal to that from an isosceles triangle. So, life is easier, right? Right, but again, you have to account for this. Don't just say this one is equal to that and you don't make any link to why it is so. This one is linked to this, C2, C2 linked to that, and therefore those two are linked. Great stuff. All right, so we can prove that similarity easily. So that five marks is in the bag. Give a reason why G1 equals 90 degrees. Ah, we know that a line from center to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord. So that's theorem one, so that is it. Don't write theorem one, but say line from center to midpoint of the chord. Done. 
prove with reasons that okay let's just leave this to you see these ones are the type of questions that always try to to to, to destroy your confidence when you are cruising those type of questions like to destroy your confidence so these ones are the higher grade type questions so to speak now let's just work with what we've already established so far and see where does it take us before we get ourselves into trouble it's easy to get into trouble if you want to walk and never mind where you're walking so you are allowed to walk but you have to mind your step isn't it so 10.2.1 hey so we have to prove this one so we know that ah we're going to use the tangent perpendicular to radius story and then it links f1 and c1 plus 2 once we prove corresponding angles then those lines are parallel or if you like you can use this one to move in here and say co-interior angles it's up to you but why do you want to struggle when you already have a direct link just prove one cause the link done all right so we're going to start by saying okay f1 equals 90 degrees which is given so you're not gonna get a mark for this one but it sets up your life when you have angles put the caps okay uh, we can say also also what we know that angle oh no 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 don't write like that angle c1 plus c2 okay combine them or you can put them as a subscript it's fine what do we know about that angle is equal to 90 degrees oh this is the strong one why we know that the tangent is perpendicular to radius sometimes you can write tangent ec is perpendicular to radius cg which is fine but this is usually enough you never need to explain you can say therefore angle f1 equals angle c1 plus c2 okay therefore fb is parallel to CG. Why? Corresponding angles are equal or proved equal. Uh, equal. Let's just say they are equal. We proved them equal anyway. So that's it. So that is how we get our first three marks. I think the most important statement is this one and this one and maybe to link these two is maybe maybe what we can add but two marks was enough here sometimes you see they give more for less and sometimes they give less for more which is crazy man but let's not say too much so that is how you deal with that situation so let's look at B what does B say prove that triangle FCB okay all oh, right all right i'm not going to outline them because sometimes the diagram looks a bit ugly so yeah. Uh, So, uh, don't worry too much about too many things, you know. Sometimes, you just want to take your time and enjoy this when you can. Because, look, if you finish your metric, guys, you're never going to enjoy it as much as you would when you're going to get marks for it. And some serious accolades for it, like a distinction and stuff. 
See now doing it outside metric is not as rewarding as when you're doing it in metric. All right, so we've done our job there. So what is the story here? So we're linking, we're trying to prove congruency for these two. All right, not a problem. But remember, you will always try to use other other stuff, other stuff from the diagram. So you don't necessarily limit yourself to these two triangles. But we're going to try and prove the similarity. So we can say in triangles, what? A, maybe let's just say in triangle. Yeah, ne? Kale rongo kengo. In triangle, F, C, B. And triangle, C, D, B. Sometimes I like to put my statements so that whatever I'm doing, I'm already forming the links automatically, but using the diagram as the link between the two. So what do I know? I know that here I have this situation. This one is 90 degrees, okay? Of course, I don't really have to worry about that 90 degrees, but I think, um, yeah, yeah. But I think the most important one is this one. Because I've stated with triangles, so I can decide which one to take to which one. Okay, let's just start nicely and make it long as possible. So we're going to say fine F2 because now F2 was not really stated. So F2 is 90 degrees, so not a problem. This one is as good as given, right? Or you can say, let's just do the right thing, man. Say it is equal to angle F1. So angle F2 is equal to angle F1 equals to 90 degrees, okay? You can say angles on a straight line so that we don't make life difficult for ourselves. So we want to prove that F2 is 90 degrees, okay? Spare that this thing looks ugly. Forgive me for that. And then you can say also what I know that angle C two plus three right is equal to 90 degrees what is the story this is angles angle at semi circle or semi circle or can say angle subtended by the diameter they told us that bit is the diameter so that should be 90 degrees and we've already stated it so we can already see that these two pairs are equal therefore f2 of that other triangle is equal to angle C um, 2 plus 3. So I'm just going to use the subscript. But if you like, you can say angle DCB or BCD. It's up to you. First link done. Now we need to, to prove just two sets because the third one is the remaining angles. So now the second set you can tell that, well, this is the 10 chord theorem. So the 10 chord theorem makes our lives easy because this one is going to make us go around the curves and we don't want to. So if we proved to, uh, we've set it. So we can say, but angle C1 of this other triangle is equal to angle D2 of the other triangle. So this one is a 10 chord theorem. All right, great. So once we prove these ones are equal, even if we didn't make this nice link that this one is equal to that because of alternate angles, but this one is equal to that because of, I mean, there's no need. We can just say, therefore, angle what? B2 equals angle B3. Because B2 is for this one and B3 is for that one. We can just say here remaining angles. But if we had to prove, if you we were asked this question directly, then you would have to use that link. But because now it is asked in the context where we already proved two sets to be equal, then the remaining is obvious, is obvious. Therefore, triangle 
FCB is definitely similar to triangle CDB and this is angle 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 or your right equiangular there goes the power I was waiting for that nightmare oh because yeah where's my little thought okay guys for a second we have a bit of a situation here now it's going to make life a little bit uncomfortable uh, but we can find a way of getting things done all right but it's not gonna be as smooth as we would like for it to be damn these people the, the life they make us live is uncomfortable but what can we do when they just want to sabotage everything so that we can just vote out ANC? I mean, this is just my opinion, though. Don't take it seriously. But I feel like someone is sabotaging the ANC. Yes, it's failing the country for sure. But they are being sabotaged so that they can be voted out. And that is not fair. Anyway, so that is how we do this one. So I guess... These statements pretty much, um, this is important, of course. This one is a strong statement. And essentially, this one is a strong statement. And that is a strong statement. That certainly says, uh, one, two, three, four. But I think this one is the stronger one of these two. Because that was already evident. So, yeah. Think that is fine but I don't think they would really award a mark for this one because they already said proof so they know that it is indeed true but maybe guess I need a ball so let's see me give a fit it's not this is so well so but now I'm gonna be one hand <laughs> one hand person it's terrible okay guys it's fine we're gonna work we're going to work, man. So we took our eight marks and we are like, thank you very much. Now let's do this next one. It says now, give a reason why that G1 is 90 degrees. That is very easy. So we can answer this 10.2.2. That fine angle G1 is equal to 90 degrees because this is the line from center to midpoint of chord. Just leave it like that. Line from center to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to chord. So you don't want to overly complicate your life there. You take the mark and you like, thank you, I am not wasting my breath here. But the next question, yo, it's so uncomfortable, man, that the power was snatched. Now it's not going to be a very nice and smooth uh, work here. Uh -huh. Should have moved much quicker. Should have moved quicker. And I didn't. All right. Um, let's do these questions. Let's just do these questions now. I'm gonna try just like my name anyway so we want to prove now that CD squared so once you hear squared you know that fine we're going to use some similar triangles of course but they share a common side so let's see what is the statement let's explore it says CD squared equals CG plus DB. So you have CG and DB. So in essence, it's telling you that you're comparing this blue triangle with this triangle here. So I'm going to outline it pink, okay? Just so you can see it. So we're doing this blue triangle and this triangle here. Just going to outline it on the outside. Nicely pink. Oh, doch. no, 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 no. This one is not going the right direction. So we're going this direction. So we are comparing this stippled edge 
of a triangle which is going to be that pink and this one so we need to prove similarity here because guess what these two have this side in common so we're going to see that this side is essentially corresponding to that side somehow okay uh, so let's go ahead and do the thingy so how do we compare these two fine what do we know we know that this angle C2 of this blue triangle is equal to angle C3 of this uh, pink outline of a triangle. Why? Because these are the radii. CO equals OD radii. So these two are equal. Are equal. These are so-called angles opposite equal sides. Two, we know that this is 90 degrees proved above, but this one is also 90 degrees proved above. Therefore, these two are equal. Once you prove two equal sets, we don't really have to find a direct link between this last one and that one. They will just automatically be the remaining angles. So once we've proved that similarity, we're going to use now that similarity situation to get to the final one. So let's just go ahead and start working. So I may not show the diagram much in this question here. So we're going to say here 10.2.3. Yeah, oh, what an uncomfortable situation I'm in. Now we're going to say in triangle, say uh, CDB and triangle. Um, this is CGD. Okay, not a problem. Of course, we're using our diagram as our means to an end, but trying to compare those two. So I know for a fact that angle um, for this big one, CDB, so this is angle, let's just say BCD is equal to uh, uh, 90 degrees. So this is proved above, okay? And also, we know that fine uh, G2 is going to be equal to G1 equals to 90 degrees. These are angles on a straight line. Okay. Great. Because we know that fine that angle should be equal to that angle. We proved that one. In essence, we're proving this one. They lie on the same straight line. We can therefore conclude that DC, did I say D, but this is supposed to be B, man. So this is BCD equals what? G2, because G2 is in that triangle. All right, not a problem. We don't need to provide each equals to 90 degrees, right? We can say also what? I know that D2 of triangle what? And uh, the blue triangle, right? So we also know that this D2 belongs in that blue triangle equals C3 of the other triangle. So we can say that D2 equals angle C3 of the other one. This is what angles opposite equal sides what are those sides this is the side co equals um od these are ready i don't know sometimes the the reason can be a bit complicated but if you like before you say the statement you can just write co equals od why these are radii and then you can conclude therefore and then you say that statement but the good thing is that it has the effect of linking with those triangles now once we prove two sets this set and that set then we are in good place so you can make a complex reasoning here no one is going to punish you you don't necessarily have to write it in short but writing it in short saves you your space and time so we can say therefore Mm, what? I know that from the big one, it is B3 is going to be equal to, for the other one, is going to be D1 plus 2. 
these are the remaining angles okay therefore triangle CDB is similar to triangle CGD and of course angle 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 or you can say equiangular therefore this implies let's not say therefore too much if these triangles are similar what does that imply now let's have a look at our diagram so it's going to be a bit of a cumbersome work here now what does it tell me i'm definitely going to start with my cd of this blue triangle cd is opposite that angle this angle is equal to which angle this angle here d1 and 2 of this triangle and which side is opposite this angle it is CG so I know that CD over CG I'm going to start there because it must take one triangle over the other so it's going to be CD over CG so you know what is the link always choose the angles that are equal and take the sides opposite those angles in each and put the ratio like that so what is this going to be equal to I already know that I have a DB here so I'm going to definitely use this side. So what is DB here? Um, DB on this triangle is opposite that 90 degrees. This 90 degrees is equal to that 90 degrees of the other triangle. And the side opposite that is CD, which is definitely what I want to use. So this is going to be DB or BD. Let's just use it as they wrote it, DB over we saw that this is going to be CD for the other one because the hypotenuse side for this one is CD. Okay. Now once you make that ratio, you just go and say these are the proportional sides, prop sides in similar triangles. Of course, you know very well that this is directly emanating from that proof. And then all you do here, you just cross multiply. Therefore, CD squared equals uh, CG times DB, which is exactly what they wanted you to prove. So there it is, it comes out nicely. So with an understanding of your diagram, it becomes a bit smooth to do the work. Okay, so that was five marks. So for me, for me, this one is a bit stronger because it was not quite direct, okay? It was not quite direct. So I would also give you a mark for this one, right? And then this one deserves two marks actually because to actually see which sides are in proportion and the reason I think for me is the stronger one. And then the final answer so this is how I would break down the five marks the rest was pretty straightforward so I wouldn't really say it was strong enough to give you the marks okay so let's end this pain guys we're almost at the end so let's do the last question last question says prove Can I save my hand here so this last one says prove Okay, hence, meaning once they say hence, sometimes they give you clues that what you already have, you're going to need to use. Because once you see that word, hence, it already tells you. I'm trying to multitask now with a pen in my mouth, okay, which is wrong. So, hence proof. Once you hear this, know that whatever you have done, will have to be applied. If you don't, you're going to sweat and die, okay? Once they say hence, that means any one of these things that we've done, we need to look into them, as well as try to link with what is being given. They're saying prove that DB equals CG plus FB. So where's DB? DB and CG are there. Now there's FB. Where did we find FB? FP was in this triangle and that. So that means we have to link this triangle to this and to these two together. So now we have to find a way of linking all of this. But now there's a plus. Once you see a plus sign where you have triangles like right angled triangles, 
or even if it wasn't, know that once you see a plus, it will either use Pythagoras theorem, number one, or you may have to use the cosine rule because cosine rule has some signs between some sides and some angles, okay? So you think, ah, if I have 90 degrees, 90 degrees, so it's going to be Pythagoras here. But where is this Pythagoras going to have to be applied? Maybe here, because it has DB. That is the side I'm looking for. And FB is just trying to say this one has to link to something here. And CG, that one has to link to something here as well for me to have this Pythagoras theorem working perfectly. Now, let's start here. Let's take that FB and have it linked to this blue triangle. We proved that this was similar to that. So we're going to be very careful here and use what is going to give us exactly what we want. All right. So how are we going to begin this story? I think the best way to link this to that is to get this side. So let's have a look. This side is opposite this angle. And this angle is equal to that angle of this yellow triangle. And this angle is opposite that side FB. So I'm going to say BC over FB from these two similarities here. So let's try. So we're going to say here, okay, 10.2.4. We're going to start here and say, fine. Um, say, um, should I really state in triangles? Okay, let's just say in triangle FBC and triangle um or they wrote fcb let's just write it that way fcb and triangle cdb okay because we want to know what are we doing here we know that great bc okay let's let's just use uh Maybe I should have started with that one and that one because now it's going to twist me around. So, but let's use BC of that triangle. So we're going to say BC of this triangle over. Now BC, now because I switched the gears a bit. So BC for me here, right? Because it's also part of this triangle. That's why I'm going to use it. So BC is opposite the right angle. And in this one is going to be BD just going to twist me a bit so it's going to be BD equals what so we don't want to do a lot of trouble for ourselves here so we want to use FB because we wanted to drag FB into this so FB in this triangle is opposite that right and this one is equal to that and this angle is opposite BC in that one so it's going to be FB over BC uh, FB over BC again we can just say here these are the proportional sides or sides in similar triangles so by restating them you know you proved them similar above so sometimes providing statements is not going to be very easy so therefore we know that BC squared is going to be equal to FB times DB or BD, whatever it is. Ah, BD. Okay, let's use what we wrote. Sometimes it's better to write what you wrote and be consistent because if you jump around, you're going to be committing murder. Of course, suicide because who is going to die? All right, so now we know this story here. Okay, but, but, we have BC squared, right? BC squared. Do you see that? Yes, of course. But now, what do we know about BC squared? We can say, fine, if this is already squared, according to Pythagoras, if we focus on the blue triangle, 
bc squared is going to be equal to bd squared minus this one, right? So I can already do that, or I can say bd squared. It's up to me really what I do. I can say bd squared equals bc squared plus cd squared, right? Maybe let's do that. Say the square on the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the two adjacent sides, okay? Because it really links nicely. You can say but, but, but what? In triangle what? B, C, D, right? I know that B, D squared is going to be equal to B, C squared plus C, D squared. What is this reason here? This is Pythagoras. Okay. All right. So what does this imply? This implies, hmm, is BD squared my problem? It's not my problem. So I can leave it as that. So this means BD squared equals, but what is BC squared? BC squared from above is FB times BD plus what is CD squared? CD squared from above is CG times DB. Let's just say BD because we used BD. Okay. So that is fine. Uh, maybe I should have said DB, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It's one and the same thing. Now, do you see when you use what you found, it makes your life pretty easy? Because now all you have to do is to divide by BD. So you just divide by BD. Okay. This will be such that when you divide by BD, this will be such that BD equals. Now you can say when you divide by BD here, you remain with FB plus when you divide, there it goes CG. Therefore, you can just answer the question now because they wrote db. So therefore, db equals, you can start with the cg that they put first, cg plus fb. So how you work it, you know that this is the same thing. So, so isn't it what they wanted you to prove? It is indeed what they wanted you to prove. So that is the answer. Great. We've nailed it. Now, let's see where those five marks come from. Of course, we were never asked this, so to get to this guy was cool. And to use Pythagoras here was cool. Ne? And for a correct substitution here was cool. And for the final answer, it was cool. But I think the fifth mark here will come from this story because, I mean, it was a strong statement to make. So these are our five marks in a nutshell. And that sums up the 25 marks of this question. Of course, including that proof we ran away from. All right, guys, but I'm glad that we stopped that proof because we were going to struggle without having worked our diagram when the power cut came. So this is how you guys could have done this. Uh, and I hope you guys uh, are smiling where you are. Mm, that you did your best and you got those marks. And if you did get all of them, so that's wonderful. But if you didn't, it's still not a big deal. Um, it seems like you guys are going to be offered a chance to rewrite and uh, in November, so you can just start preparing already and make sure you know everything that is to be known. Again, I think I've posted a lot of videos on Euclidean geometry and I think the ones I selected are some of the tough ones. So if you watch those videos, you'll be able to find your confidence, I am sure, because it's the same approach that we are using in this one. And it is very much effective. I can assure you, you'll struggle less. So this last question was truly a higher grade type of question because it involved quite a few steps that would be a bit difficult to figure out initially. But when you work your diagrams before you do anything, it becomes a piece of cake. As you can see, we didn't struggle to find the links because everything was done. 
so guys thank you for your patience and thank you for watching and i hope you liked the video and if you did you can just give a like and perhaps share with your friends as well if you find it worthy to be shared so that they too can experience the fun that you have found here um, i hope the learning continues and that you get stronger and stronger and that you nail this thing in your final exam at least you'll have two chances this media exams you will have the trial and the final so you will have a bit of a fair chance and guess what i'll be right beside you in terms of these videos because i'll try to post as regularly as possible so that you can find yourself a chance to i mean work through this with someone also working with you but here's the thing work more by yourself then you rely on um, these videos once you get the drill but of course to get your confidence to get your drill watch as many of these videos as you can like i said i posted one of the toughest questions in this euclidean section in the previous other videos please have a look at them you will see that this is becoming a bit easier once you have those kinds of questions in in, in mind um again keep learning keep practicing and keep your faith trust me everything is going to work out if you put in the work and yeah just pray so that no demons or bad spirits interfere with your work and that no bad personalities create some crazy questions that are beyond your reach at least let the questions be at the level that you can reach no matter how challenging they are so that you can get some marks if you can't get all otherwise guys again uh, thank you for your patience and thank you for watching and thank you already for sharing these videos with your friends i can see the viewership is increasing and i can see also the subscribers are increasing and i think it would be fair to say after your media exams i'll create those questions so that we can start to have perhaps our competition and see if there are any strong winners of course we're going to create three places for the winner and then of course i can already tell you that uh, that competition is going to be a combination of paper one and paper two i'll select nice i will create nice questions from paper one and to paper two and then of course the qualification would be you have to get say 70 percent in that in those questions put together then I'll enter the names into some sort of a raffle. Then the three places will get the three position. I mean, the three prizes. So the idea of trying to make a qualification sort of is to give everyone a fair chance, you know, so that you can't say you know, if you got eight and that's it, or you get the best mark. So it becomes unfair. So let everyone at least have a chance, because I mean, you're not all going to get eighties and nineties and hundred percent. But we can be in the same bracket, which is a distinction. So, But for now, let's just keep it easy and not say necessarily a distinction, but something very close. 70% is the qualification. And yeah, of course, I'll think of what would be the prizes, but I'll keep them nice and easy. Maybe I can buy a study guide of mathematics or a textbook as one of the prizes. And then maybe we can, you know, do other things that are much nicer but that will help you to really get this right so maybe a calculator that i have it would be nice to give this one away for someone who really needs it and maybe the third one will see what would be that price maybe i'm just saying maybe i'm not sure what i'm going to put in there so but i'll make sure guys this is a reality so that you can get the motivation to really work hard and to really do your best because it matters we need you guys uh, to qualify but not to qualify because you just passed the exams but because you understood how you passed so that you can make the difference when you get there all right guys uh, bye for now and see you in the next few videos which would be possibly physics because i'm going to try and find those question papers then we do the physics but if i don't i will find other physics question papers and to do them Otherwise, good luck with your upcoming exams. I hope you get that good mark so that you get closer and closer to your destination.
，拜拜。